Mr. President, I recognize the delegate from Virginia, Governor Edmund Randolph. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, we are in crisis. There are those both at home and abroad who prophesy our downfall as United States. Why? Because the Articles of Confederation have utterly failed to accomplish what they were created for. Now, I have only the greatest respect for the authors of the Articles. They were patriots. Their efforts were adequate to their times when there were no trade wars among the states, no rebellion in Massachusetts or Virginia. <laughs> The courts have been burned in Richmond. True, Mr. Gary, true. We live in difficult times. The Articles cannot adequately govern us. But there is a remedy. A remedy as bold as the times require. I propose that we correct and enlarge the Articles of Confederation in order that they might accomplish the objects proposed by their creation. I now resolve this convention into committee of the whole house for uh, discussion of Governor Randolph's plan. delegate from Pennsylvania, Mr. Gouverneur Morris. I see an inconsistency in the very first clause of this plan. Governor Randolph, your first resolution calls for the Articles of Confederation to be, now let me get this right, corrected and enlarged. That is correct. Yet the remaining 14 articles do not do that. They abolish them. This plan calls for an entirely new government. If we are abolishing the Articles of Confederation, let us say so clearly. Governor Randolph, do you wish to reply? Yes. Mr. Morris, I am indebted to you for your clarification. I propose that we set aside the first clause of the Virginia Plan and in its place substitute the resolution that a national government ought to be established consisting of a supreme legislative, executive, and judiciary. The articles are thus abolished and a new form of government substituted for the old. I recognize this, he delegates from New Jersey, Mr. William Patterson. Our instructions do not even allow us to discuss a scheme in which the Articles of Confederation are abolished. We may amend them, nothing more. This is struck with horror that such a thought ever occurred to Governor Randolph. He just annihilated our government. Amen. Amen, Mr. Patterson. I was sent here from Massachusetts to amend the Articles of Confederation, not to dissolve them in the states as well. Read the plan, Mr. Gary. You'll see that it does not dissolve the states. I have read enough to see. Order, the blind to the danger. Well, if this plan will finally force the states to obey federal law that I'm for it, I accept Governor Randolph's change. I say let's do away with the Articles. Here, here. Recognize the delegate from Connecticut, Mr. Roger Sherman. All I want to say is this. The Articles didn't give enough powers to Congress. I wrote part of them, so I know. Let's not cut so deeply into them that the states won't agree with us. That's my say for now. Thank you, Mr. Sherman. So you are against doing away with the Articles of Confederation? That's what I just said, isn't it? Mr. Chairman, Chair, I recognize Mr. Madison. Gentlemen, the moment has arrived which is to decide whether the American experiment is to survive and be a blessing to the world or not. On the one hand, we have the Articles of Confederation. On the other, we have a proposal for an entirely new kind of government. 
Every day, the Union grows more impotent and her people more discontent. Is this what we wish? No. If it is true, as Mr. Patterson said, that we are authorized only to amend the Articles of Confederation, then I say, let us amend them out of existence. Mr. Chairman, the chair recognizes the delegate from Connecticut, Mr. Roger Shem. Look, we've got to keep the state strong. Everybody knows it's only in a small republic, like a state, that popular government works. I think not so, Mr. Sherman. My research tells me that it is only in a large republic that good government is even possible. Forgive me for interrupting my colleague, but uh, Mr. Madison, don't all authorities state that Good government arises from small republics like the states? Yes, Colonel, they do. But the states? Is there good government in Rhode Island? Well, Rhode Island is too small. It's always controlled by some faction or other. Dr. Franklin, is there good government in Pennsylvania? Now, that's a, a larger state. Indeed not, Mr. Madison. The Pennsylvania legislature is controlled by a faction which is far from just. Alas... It is also far from honest. All societies are made up of warring factions. Rich against the poor. Religion against religion. Race against race. A small republic, like a state, too often falls prey to one of these factions. The result? Lawlessness and oppression especially against the minorities. It is only in a large republic with many different-minded people that no one faction can gain control. In such a republic, the liberties of all the people are naturally safeguarded. Such a republic, if it were dedicated to justice, protected by truth, and of the spirit of the people, would, I believe, last through the ages, but... First, it must exist.